Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gaming Daddy channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today I have a discussion video that will basically open up a few uh, pointers, uh, tips on how to work your way through Roosevelt Island's legendary, but not the entirety of the mission. Actually, this is the last part. Uh, there are two methods that I've seen being used. It's uh, One is called the boat, or the other one's called not the boat. If you actually name them, I think those would be the sensible names to go with. Now, the reason I'm actually bringing this up is because, one, a lot of people have expressed you know, some comments here saying that they've not been able to play legendary missions. Uh, some other people have said, you know, one thing about the legendary missions is because they're not necessarily that bad balanced and so they don't see the need why they should bother playing the missions and these conversations have sparked up you know in some cases arguments uh spirited uh exchanges in the sense that you know what is the biggest crux of the issue is it that the legendary is not balanced or are people not playing them the right way that's meant for their groups so if you notice right here in this footage that you're actually seeing i played this uh mission earlier today tuesday the 25th of may as the reset was actually rolled over on my playstation character and i was fortunate to be in a group that had a lot of discipline but the group wanted us to actually use the boat method. The boat method is where when you get to the end, you can pretty much come out here and everybody starts to, you know, use their turrets, uh, sniper turret, assault turrets to try to maybe reduce the number of enemy NPCs that are within this arena. Because once you jump in, the bosses will spawn. That's why people usually do this. And also there are these mechs that, you know, pretty much roll around mini tanks that go ahead and they throw all these ordinances at you so doing this is a way to kind of get them out of your way reduce the numbers and then after you guys have cleared the you know the area you guys basically you know you take the jump and run in and then you make your way to the boat now we had a healer so the healer was able to take us through i had a decoy we ran we made our way into the boat we camped in there and then we started taking on the two um big huge b something something drones so this is the way that you play this part of the mission make sure you keep your head down because some of the enemy NPCs will mount the choppers. Uh, that said, the choppers they will mount the mini guns. While there will be enemy NPCs that actually do spawn from a chopper. I think you're gonna get one or two waves, and I think you might get one heavy. I don't know the order in which he shows up, but he can show up at any time, and he will make his way to the boat. An easy way to deal with him is to just place a turret outside or put something like a stinger hive out there, and usually he backs away depending on where the chopper lands. So this is a very common method to go. Now, somebody made fun of the Division 2 saying, you see, this is why you have to go into the boat because the game is not balanced and all this stuff. And I laughed and said, you know, what's funny is it actually is just one of the methods. I learned that method after I'd beaten the legendary missions many times. In fact, the more popular method is that immediately you guys actually take on this particular area. And by the way, this is my PC run for today, the 25th of May. Many groups will actually encourage you to jump in right away. Like once you guys get here, there is no need to start taking on all these ordinances or whatever. We just literally jump right in. In fact, in this group today, there were two opinions. One person said, hey, don't go in yet. I think they were probably maybe trying to change their build to a turret build or something like that. And then just as we basically just walked right in, as, as one person just got the memo, they didn't even wait. This uh, first guy, he just went ahead and just, you know, he pretty much just jumped into the place and we all just followed suit. And so him jumping in, uh, this if you notice, the other person had already set up a turret there. Probably they wanted to go ahead and use that method, but it was too late. So when you find yourself in a group, that actually has experience doing this it's very simple you scatter everybody you make sure you have some survivability i was wearing glass cannon throughout this mission and i knew that the battle was going to be a little hot so i quickly switched to something the first chess piece i could think about so i didn't have glass cannon on me and that way yes my damage was greatly reduced but my work was still being done somebody had a mortar i think it was uh i, th I think the guy was actually setting up a mortar i think that's what he was trying to do and we just played the mission here now we did not wipe thank Thankfully, I don't know how uh, we didn't wipe, but again, this was a very super competent group that I randomly match made with, and they were on the money. They were doing work. I was using uh, the uh, opportunistic talents with my marksman rifle build and my Scorpio, and I was just providing buffs. That's all I was doing. I mark an enemy NPC. If I have the opportunity, I melt them. If not, I move on to another enemy NPC. That was the work I was trying my best to do. I mean, sometimes I got carried away like here. Uh, I was trying to take out this guy, and I think he melted me. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> as I hit him. But that was about that was uh, you know about the only um, major drama I had, and then we had to rest somebody else. So it is possible for you to not ever use the boat to take out all of the enemy NPCs. Now here is the question: Should you use the boat or should you not use the boat? Well, from both examples and both scenarios that I've shown, I don't think there is an answer that doesn't have to deal with your build and team composition. In fact, if you're actually working with people who are kind of new to the division game, depending on their builds, depending on how they play, it may be useful for you guys to actually use the boat method. The boat method is the method that can do pretty much work for you guys because it does provide a lot of cover areas. It, by the time the heavy is actually walking up to you guys or if you know where the chopper lands, you guys can actually pretty much take them out. And like I said, use a turret or a stinger or use a decoy. These are some of the things that will keep the heavy busy. Ensure that you duck because enemy NPCs will mount the mini guns. And so you guys can do that. There is nothing wrong with either methodology uh, some methods, you know, and some people are much brave. If your team has a lot of good synergy, people's builds are shredding and doing a good job. You could also use this particular method as well. So both methods are viable, but you have to consider that your builds and your team, the way you guys are working, the way you guys are built are actually um, meant for the kind of uh, method you're going to use. And so once you're done, you still have to deal with those mechs, those droids. You still have to take your time to kind of clear them little by little. But again, if your team really understands what's going on, then that's pretty much what it is. Now, it's not by shade level. So please, let's not equate shade level to experience. I have played with people who had shade levels just similar to this team that did not know what the heck they were doing. I've also played with people who had less shade levels than these, these guys because back in the day when we first started playing the legendary missions we didn't have high shade levels this is how we played this particular area we didn't even bother using the boat i didn't even know you could make it to the boat i thought they'd destroy you before you got to the boat but then i found out that was also a viable method so for those of you who may be looking into playing roosevelt island the legendary this is one of the major aspects that i feel you need to understand uh based on your team and based on your team synergy and you know use the environment to your advantage there's a lot of cover just make sure that you're very careful as you're playing through it enemies can sneak up on you before you know what's going on make sure that you're built in a way that gives your team good buffs make sure you're built in a way that keeps you alive because now as much as you do have cover you still have a lot of exposure out here uh, more exposure than the boat itself so that's pretty much my video let me hear your thoughts in the comment section talk to me there are people who are out here that would be happy to actually uh you know try one of these methodologies there are people who are out here who would probably you know do things differently uh, i want to know what builds you actually you know recommend if you maybe have people that are wanting to run and they're first timers and they want to kind of get their you know get their feet wet what should they be doing and what builds should they be running? Veterans, go ahead and share in the comment section below. Thank you so much for your time and audience. I appreciate you guys so much. Hopefully we'll see in another one. Peace out.